And finally, there is an add-on that makes creating technical style drawings in Blender so much easier than using Measure It, and it's called Measurable. It's all thanks to Johnny Matthews. He created an entire Node group all about it. I saw it, and then I worked with him to deliver this add-on that is just feature rich to the brim, and I cannot wait to show it to you right now. So to start it all off, to get a hold of Measurable, the links are down in the description. I'm gonna show you the workflow from Gumroad here. So on Gumroad, there's a big disclaimer here letting you know what the actual price is. It's only three bucks if you wanna support further add-on development and other precision add-ons put in eight. So either three or eight there, it's up to you. Once you get a hold of that, you can then go over to Blender. We're gonna to go to Edit, then Preferences, click install, go to that zip file, and that is basically it installed. In here, you will then have measurable, measurable tools. Turn that on and you'll see on your N menu, you will have a new tab right here of measurable. Now I have a little hidden object here, so let me just quickly show you adding some dimensions to this right here. So it's pretty simple. Click what it is you want to add a measurement to. Then add a measurement container. Now this is really cool because using the measurement container means that you can very quickly get rid of everything and show everything and have multiple sets of measurements for the same object if you want. It's really a really well thought out thing. Anyway, with that said, I don't really like having this big text in the middle, so I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna click into here nice and quickly. I'm gonna select this edge right there, go back out of edit mode, make sure this is selected, then select the measurement container. I'm gonna add a measurement, and I'm going to add an edge length. Now, this is a precision ready file. You'll see that nothing's turned up. If we move the distance, you might see that there's some like dots appearing on my screen. That's because I've got to basically make things a little bit bigger because I have my unit scale set to 0.001. That is correct. You can set up your own unit scale here as well. You can set up what size empty is gonna be. I'm gonna set this to 100 for now. Uh, actually, no, not 100. I'm just gonna set that to 10 for now. and. Now let's go ahead and change some of the defaults of everything that gets created here. So right here where it says shared measurement settings, open that up. We can then increase the text. Okay, there's the text. We can increase the line thickness. So let's go for a line thickness of, I don't know, one. Let's go for an arrow size of something around three. Uh, three is probably a bit too much. Let's go for 1.5. I don't need this to be too crazy. And that's pretty much, I'm happy with that. Now, I really want to change the actual sort of the rotation of this. Well, all I have to do is click this edge length and down here you'll see individual measurement setting. I can click in there and here is all the information that I need. It can be a rotation. Now, here's the interesting thing. All of this is basically just a modifier. If we go into the modifier tabs, you'll find all of the settings right here too. It truly is incredible stuff and it can be quite overwhelming, but truly just play around and it will be fine. Now, you might be seeing that the text is all the way off over there. I'm wanting to create a technical drawing, so let's bring in a camera. So I'll press Shift A. Let's bring in a camera right there. I'm gonna go for a view somewhere around here. I'll press Control Alt Zero to bring the camera to my view. And now that I've done that, I'm also go over to my view here, snap it, the camera to my view so that it's somewhere about there. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, that number is not following my camera and I want it to follow my camera. How do I do that? Just select the container, then go over into measurable. Then you're gonna find the lovely options. Where about is it? On the shared measurement, select the camera. And from now on, that text is gonna point at the camera. It is so intuitive, I love it. Now you'll see that the arrows are crossing over the text itself. You can either increase the actual text thickness so that it goes beyond the line, or you can go and change up some settings here. So again, I'll go into the individual thing and right here, offset right there. So now there is plenty of offset. Now, if I wanted to, I could have also changed the rotation of the text. So here it is, text rotation. I could have changed that to fit it however other way that I wanted, but that's besides the point. Let's carry on playing around with some other settings. So I'm gonna go in here, press one. I'm gonna select three vertices, go back out, select that 
measurement container once again. I'm going to just go to the add measurements here and I just want to add, let's go for an external diameter. I'll click external diameter. It's added it right there, but I want this to be in a different location. So I'll select the null here. Editing me here, look, just a very quick one. Whenever I say null, I do mean a Blender empty. I come from the visual effects industry in the past. So I used to use After Effects a lot. So an empty used to be called a null. Now a null is called an empty. So just in case you're wondering what I mean by null, I mean a Blender empty. If you have trouble selecting the null, hold down Alt, then click, and then you'll be able to select the empty that's associated with it. I'll press G, oh, it's not snapping. I could just set up vertex snapping manually by pressing control shift tab and doing it all that way. Or I can just go to the tools and toggle vertex snapping to on. And now it's going to snap very quickly to my vertex. I've moved it there. I'm happy with that positioning there. I can now go back over into here, make sure that the last thing that I've had was basically selected, which it already is. And then I can increase my dimensional length to push it out there. I can also go over to, where is it? The offset, I think here it is. Text offset, move that off a little bit. Now this is looking a little bit boring to me. I really wanna be able to add a different color to this. So let's go and do exactly that. I wanna select the measurement container. Once I have that selected, I'm gonna go over to the shared measurement properties. And right here, you'll see a material color. Now this is a material that is specifically designed to basically not really be affected by lights. So it's really nice to have that built in here. So I'm gonna create, I don't know, some sort of nice bright turquoisey color like this. I'm quite happy with that. I'll create that material and then I'll create another sort of, let's go for a pretty dark, uh, why not? Yeah, I'm gonna go for a pretty dark grayish color as well. So I'm gonna make that a little bit darker still. Yeah, there we go. I'll create those two. Now those have just created materials. If I wanna apply them here on the text material, I will select that green. And on the line material, I will select that gray. And you'll see that those have now been assigned to everything. Now, if I wanted that to be individually, I can just go in here and set it individually as well. Just make sure that if you set individual settings like that to turn on the override to then that this this entire shared measurement settings doesn't change it back later on unless you want it to. So now that we've done that, let's go and play around with some of the other measurement properties that are here. So I'm gonna go into here, I'm gonna select this face here, go back out, select that container once again. I wanna do a face area, so I'll click face area, I have that right there. I can move this null to be along over there. Mm. I want those numbers to be on the other side of that arrow. So once again, I'll go in to the individual ones and here there will be text on the right, text on the left. Click that, done. It's so easy, so quick. I love this so incredibly much. Now, of course, if you want to change the units and all of that, again, it's all here in the settings. Go to the shared measurement settings. We can change this from millimeter over to centimeter. Now that's not quite right on the centimeters. We could have made that a little bit different. Then you just change the decimal points and all the rest. It is really brilliant stuff there. Okay, lastly, let's talk about the text because you can do text callouts on this, which is something that I really like. So I'm gonna add an empty up here on the top. So I'll press shift right click to move my origin point there, press shift A. I'm gonna create an empty right there, make this empty 10. So that's where I know I'm gonna be pointing at. I'll select this empty, then I will select the container. Keep in mind that it's really important looking at these add measurements that look, this is a standalone measurement. When you hover over it, it's going to tell you what you need to actually apply it. It is really nice and self-explanatory. What I wanna do here is a callout, and a callout means that the text is gonna have an arrow. A uh, text block means just a block of text. So I'm gonna go with a text callout. That's that done. It's already selected the text element. So I'm just gonna press G and pull that out over here. So there you see, there is the text callout now ready to go. Let's add a couple of settings changes to this. Again, I'm gonna go in here, make sure that I have this selected. The last one that I played around with is right here so I can really 
tweak and do all sorts of stuff here. So I'm going to add this call out to be a little bit more like that. I'm going to add a bend radius. I'm going to add a bend resolution. So let's whack that up so it's nice and bendy like that. You know what? I really want this to be a dotted line. So I'm going to go down here to the dash settings of the arrow. I'm going to say this is going to be a dashed line. I'm going to increase the dash length, something like that. And I'm happy with that. Let's add some text in here. I really like this. Um, the, uh, yeah, I really like this add on. And then I want this to be a new line. So believe it or not, you can do a new line by just doing backslash n. And then I really like this add on. I think it's cool. And I'll hit enter. And there we have it new line, all that is sorted out. We don't need to actually add that space there. And there we have it. I really like this add-on, I think it's cool. And I can just move it through the null wherever I want. It is incredibly powerful stuff. Now, lastly, let's do the angle because that's pretty important as well. We'll probably also do a little radius as well. So an angle, I'm gonna go in here, press one. I will select a vertex right down there. Again, just select the measurement container. I'm gonna add a measurement, I'm gonna add an angle measurement. Where is it? Here it is, angle measurement. I click that and that's created a whole bunch of nulls. Now what happens if I can't see the nulls that were used for this and all the rest? Like let's say I didn't want to get out of the camera view, whatever, um, or there were so many nulls on here that I didn't know where to select. Well, first it selected both of the nulls that move the actual angle. So you just press G and move them around to find them. But besides the point, you can also click the measurement container go to the angle and right here, this will select the target objects that are controlling that modifier. So very quickly you can see, oh, it's these nulls right here, these nulls, these empties. So I'm gonna select this one here, snap it to that point here, grab this one, snap it to that there, then I'll press G, Y, and pull that along there. I'm gonna go back into my camera by pressing numpad zero. I'm gonna select the container once again, go to the individual settings. Here it is, individual settings. I'm now going to start to play around and tweak with these. So line length, let's make this a little bit shorter, somewhere around there. Let's also go for the text, distance from center. Let's go somewhere like, actually, you know what? I want that there and let's increase the line length just to meet that right there. Okay, happy with that there. Let's add a radius, so click, click, click. I want this to be an external radius. So I'll click those, add a measurement, and here we have an external convex, convex, convex radius. There it is, click that convex radius. I'll grab that null, move that over there, and maybe a little bit lower, somewhere around there. As you've seen, just through three points, it's found the center to put everything in the right place. Then I will select this once again, go down into my measurement settings, increase the text distance length to something like that, maybe add a little bit of offset to that as well. And there we have it. It is so incredibly powerful, I love it. So there is so much more to cover here, but I think just very quickly, let's, let's make this sort of a semi-render, right? So, I'm going to add a light to this quickly. So I'm going to add a light. Let's go for a point light. Make this point light nice and big. I'm going to go for 200, I think. I'll move this here, G over to here, Shift D, move you over to there. And then we're going to do Shift D again, move you over there. I'm going to select all these three so I can go to the light properties, set this to one hold down Alt and then hit Enter and then it sets them all to one. And now let's go over into the render itself so we get a little look of what's gonna come out here. It's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. I'm gonna move this a little higher up so we get some more light up there. But you know what? I know that if I go here into rendering right this minute, and I render this out, that doesn't quite look it doesn't pop out to me. I want there to be black lines all the way around that. Well, a brilliant thing about Blender is that is something that's really easily to be done. That's called line art. And it's set up as a one click on here so you can hit add line style. There's a whole bunch of other tools that come here which make it nice and easy to use. Now that we've done that there, you'll see we have a line style here. Go over here, we can increase the line thickness. I'll go all the way up here. You can make that even bigger 
by changing the line scaling. It's somewhere in here. I always forget where it is, but in there, there's line scaling as well. And now let's see how that's going to look like in a render. Let's render that out. And now you'll have nice black lines everywhere. And that there is just a quick overview of Measurable. As you've seen, there are so many settings and what's brilliant about it is it lets you make it as stylized or as professional as you would like it. Again, this has been made possible thanks to Johnny Matthews, truly. Thank you so much. I've been working with him to get all the bugs out, add as many features as possible that I could think of to make this add-on an absolute powerhouse for you. Now, if you want to support him, he has a patron linked down in the description along with my patrons. Speaking of which, a huge thank you to my patrons. Truly without you, I would not be able to make Maker Tales. Now, yes, it is a paid add-on, but keep in mind, it's only three bucks if you want it. And if you want to support further development into other precision add-ons, the suggested eight bucks would be absolutely incredible. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Keep making and let the quest continue.